Hey friends, I'm so happy to have you here today and before we get started, be sure that you're signed up for my free newsletter over at CorinneBlackstone.com. Today's video, we are going to talk about how to personalize your own little jewelry box. I got these from Amazon. I will link them down below. They come in a ton of colors, but it's such a cute little box. It has a full zipper on the sides and then it can open up and then it also has a little compartment back here for some storage. So this is great for travel, all sorts of things, but these I'm using for a bride and her bachelorette group so this is going to be a really cute one now for this all you're going to need is some htv in your choice i'm going to be using a caesar electric which i will link down below you'll also need the jewelry boxes link those below as well and then for this i did use a mini press but this is one of those things that you could do pretty easily with like a home iron these would be a little hard to do with like your standard clamshell press just because they're so thick so let's go ahead and get started we're going to be adding the cute little design to the top of our jewelry boxes. These are great for travel, they're small. So this is one gives us about three and a half inch square to work with. So what I always like to do is to create a template or like a guide for my spacing and my sizing. So I'm gonna open up shapes and you can do this completely for free. I'm gonna use the square. And all I need to do is to up at the top, just tell the sizing that I want it 3.5 inches wide and that will change it to 3.5 inches high. Now you can change the color of this if you want to, really up to you, do whatever you wanna do. You can leave it gray, you can change it to the same color. However you want this to look is up to you. Same thing with adding any kind of design to the top of it. You do you, add it what you ever want, you know, however you wanna design this. Um, but this is just a like ivory color one and then I have teal colored one as well. So I want the ivory one to be a little more classic, a little more fancy. So I think for that one, I'm just gonna do my initial, just my first initial on it, because I just think that'll look really classy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do a C, but obviously like this is super boring, like we don't want it to look like that, that's just blah. So I'm gonna use a really fun website called wordmark.it to help me pick out a font for my letter C. This website is great and completely free. All I have to do is type in whatever I want and you can make a full phrase or a word. But in this case, I just need a letter. So I'm just gonna type that letter in. Then all I have to do is I can scroll through and choose any that I think I might like that might work for the look I'm going for. So I can click on those and once I go through all of my fonts, and I see which ones I like and which ones I don't, I can choose from there. Now, I will say that the letter C is a little bit boring. So maybe I wanna just do my last initial, which is the letter B. So maybe that might be a better one to choose just cause it's a little more interesting of a letter, but do you choose whatever you want. So I'm gonna go through and filter out some fonts that I like and see which one we like best. Once I've gone through and chosen the fonts that I like, I just simply have to click up here and get to filter selected fonts. And then it's gonna show me all of my different fonts that I have chosen. And then I can kind of weed it down a little bit more. So I don't really like this one. I'm gonna go ahead and remove it. And I don't like this one. It's just not what I'm going for. I think this one and this one are similar enough that I can eliminate this one. I also think this one's kind of eh, so I'm gonna get rid of that. Now I can always, again, keep weeding it down to whichever one I like the best. I don't think I like this one either. And I really think I'm leaning toward this painter one, but I also like Kayla if I want something a little more simple, but still really pretty. So I think I'm gonna go with painter. Back over in Design Space, all you need to do is have your font selected and go under the font drop down menu. And you can type in the first couple letters of the font that you're looking for, and then just simply select that font. Now it's been taking a couple seconds to change over, but it once it's changed, it's fine, perfectly good to go, looks good to me. I think that's a really cute font and I think that's what I'm going for, but I am gonna make it a little bigger because I do want it to take up quite a bit of the top of my box. And for this one, I am going to, and I just realized that I left it as a C, I wanted it as a B. 
Um, so what I'm going to do again, and I'm going to size it down a little bit because it was too big. What I'm going to do is I want to cut this with a glitter HTV because I think that'll be really, really pretty against the ivory. So I'm going to go ahead and get this one ready to go by just simply using flipping and I'm going to flip it horizontal. That way I don't have to remember to mirror it later because remember we're doing two boxes. So this other one that I'm doing is like a really pretty mint color. So I want to just change this so that I can get a better idea of what it's going to look like. So I'm going to kind of adjust my color here and I'm just going to kind of try to get it kind of close to the color that I want. And for this one, I'm gonna do a little image on it and you can do whatever you want. I mean, have fun with it, add whatever you wanna to do to it, it's up to you. Um, but I'm gonna go under images and I'm gonna search for a ring. So I'm just gonna type in the word ring and let's see what we find. We can use anything that we want, any design we want, it's up to you. You do it like you want. If you don't wanna put a ring on it, put something else on it. Like I said, have fun with this and really just do your own thing. There's no right or wrong design. You put whatever you like on it. This one would be really cute if this was for like a bachelorette party or a gift for a bride, but there's lots of great options here and you can really add anything that you want. Like let's say we wanna do, let's do floral and see what we find. So you can do anything. You could add these pretty flowers to it if you want to. I really like this one actually a lot. This might be what I do. I kind of like that. Um, you know what? Let's do it. Let's not second guess. Let's do this one. So I'm going to use this flower and I'm going to go ahead and add this to my canvas. And I'm, and I'm going to click view. And once this is added, I can size it down to fit on to my design here onto my box. So I'm going to size this down a bit. I need to go just a little smaller, I think. I don't want it to be like giant. Now, I kind of want the inside to be filled in. I think that would be maybe pretty. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna duplicate my design and I'm gonna use my contour option and I'm gonna go ahead and hide all contours and that brings me this middle section. And I could do that or I could go through and contour and get rid of this, oh, this outline. And then I just want the filled in portion. So let me go ahead and I'm gonna do show contours and I just wanna get rid of like the outline section. And if I click on that, now I've got the petals like I want. So I'm kind of thinking those might be really pretty in like a white on top of that box. That would be so gorgeous. But because I don't wanna to have to line these up really carefully, I am gonna take the back section, the black contour and hide all contours. And that's gonna make the back section solid so it's easier to layer the white on top. But I think that'll be really, really pretty against that like tealy blue. Now, because this flower doesn't particularly face any way, I don't need to mirror it to cut it with HTV. But before we're ready to cut our HTV, we're gonna hide that square that we used as our template. And I wanna make sure I save my project. So I'm gonna save this as jewel box. I can spell jewel box. That way I know what it's for. And that way if something happens, I don't have to like go back through and try to remember what I wanted to use. Then simply click make. Now this one I'm gonna do, I think, potentially in like a gold. So I'm just gonna kind of make it like a yellowy gold color. And then this one, I don't know what color I wanna use yet. Black for sure, but the white is sort of up in the air. I might use like a Caesar Electric or something. We'll see what I've got downstairs. So when I hit make, it's gonna have three different uh, mats for us to cut. So we're gonna cut our white, which is our unknown color as of yet. We're gonna cut our black, which is going to be black. And then I'm gonna cut a gold glitter for the ivory one. So the flowers for our teal and then the black and white is for, uh, or the gold is for the ivory. So once we're ready to cut, we've got our three mats. Now I'm gonna use products for black and white that'll cut on the regular vinyl setting, but the gold will cut on glitter HTV. And now I'm gonna use product that will cut on the everyday iron on setting for white and black, but the gold will cut on the glitter vinyl or iron on setting. It might say glitter HTV. I don't remember off the top of my head, but we're gonna head over to the machine. I'm gonna show you how to load your different HTV products. We'll weed them. And then I'm gonna show you how to use a mini press to apply these. I'm using some Caesar Electric on this. These are really beautiful uh, vinyls. We're gonna use this 
like really pretty pink and this pearl white. So the pearl white's gonna be the petals of our flower. So all I'm gonna do is load this. This cuts on the everyday iron-on setting. It's really easy to use. I'm gonna go ahead and load this. We'll get everything cut and weeded and then I'm gonna show you how to apply these using a mini press. This one is from Nakappa. So for this, I set this to the third dot. And on that third dot, that's about 320 degrees, which is what our electric uses. Now for this, you're gonna line it up on to your jewelry box. I like to do that while I wait. And we'll do the cream colored one as well. Now you want to make sure when you do this that you pay attention to where the back is and where the front is. And then I'm going to lay this one down where I want it. And then I just always double check my like top layer because this one does have to go a certain direction. So I always just want to kind of double check that, make sure it looks like it's going to fit, should be good. You're also going to need a piece of parchment paper, which is just this white paper. I'll link it down below. I like using the Target brand, but that way it protects your press, it protects your HTV and your jewelry box. So we'll go ahead and let this heat up. It should only take a couple of minutes and then we'll get ready to press. Now that our press is ready to go, all you're simply going to do is be careful. This part is hot, the silver. You're just going to set it on to your uh, jewelry box with the parchment paper between, giving a little bit of pressure. And I just press for a couple seconds in each area. That way you don't melt the box, but we'll go back and press again just to make sure everything sticks down. But what you'll notice is that I'm lifting and pressing. I'm not rolling it around because that can cause it to move. But what I want to show you is the top of your box. You want to be careful because if you press too long or too hot, you can melt it, which I did a little bit. But if you do that, honestly, I would just go over the rest of it and just kind of even out that like melting. It's not really melted. It just kind of got rid of like the texture, but the texture does seem to come back. So I'm not too worried about it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and see if this stuck. Looks like it's stuck really, really nicely. So now I have this really pretty B on here. Now for this blue one, I'm gonna go ahead and put the parchment paper over it. I think I'm gonna double up my parchment paper just to be extra safe with this one. And again, I'm just pressing for a couple of seconds in each area with just a little bit of pressure because you don't want to melt the uh, top because these are like a synthetic plasticky leather. So you just want to kind of take your time with it. So again, I'm just going to kind of press. I am lifting as I'm moving this around and I'm just going to kind of move it around. Now, because I'm layering, I don't want to press this layer for too long. I just want to press it enough that it sticks and it is stuck. So what I'm gonna do now is get the second layer lined up, but I wanna cool this first layer off a little bit. A lot of people will see that they get bubbling when they layer, and it's because you're not allowing this layer to cool. And by doing that, it's activating the adhesive on the other part of your HTV, and it's gonna cause some air bubbles and things in there. So I do just like to kind of cool this down a little bit before I press my next layer. So it, once it's pretty cool to the touch, which it is now, we can go ahead and put the second layer on. Now remember, this goes a specific direction. So I gotta find that direction and then you wanna get it lined up where you want it. And then parchment paper again, and then I'm gonna go ahead and just press a couple of seconds in each spot. Now what's nice about these, they're not gonna get washed, so you don't have to worry about the HTV being perfectly pressed down. You just wanna press it enough that it's stuck. So I think that one might need a little bit more. It looks like that one corner down here didn't get enough. And I'm just gonna press up here really quick. Once I'm happy with that, I can go ahead and peel this off and I wanna go slow. And we have these adorable boxes. Now, like I said, I think I pressed this one just a smidge too long. I've got a little melty spot. But other than that, I think they came out really, really cute. Let me get you guys a really good view of these. 
The finished boxes came out really, really good. I also wanted to make sure that you could see what the inside of them looked like. So I did have an extra of the teal one, but I think that the Caesar Electric really lends itself so nicely to that teal and to the white. It just has a nice sheen to it. And this was really, really easy to do. Now, again, this is not something that you would do with like a clamshell or a swing away heat press because they are very, very tall, but I would really recommend using a mini press or you could even use a home iron if that's what you have, totally fine. I also wanted to show you that when you pull the mirror down, there's even more additional storage here, a little pocket, and then the backing part for like where you would hang your earrings. But you can see you just flip this little piece up, there's a little mirror and spaces for like rings and bracelets and whatever else you might have with you. Now again, I'm linking everything that I used in this video down below. If you shop with 143 Vinyl, make sure to use code Corinne to save 5%. I hope you had a wonderful day and as always, happy crafting.